Now, the next thing I wanna talk about in the first tip is transcoding, either to proxy media or just optimized. Throughout my video, I mentioned transcoding a lot of times. I mentioned you will have to transcode. Plan to transcode, basically. Plan to make proxies once again. So let's start out with my Mac Pro. This is 12 core with the Vega 2 graphics, 192 gigs of RAM. For the 4K 30 frames per second footage, which is the same as the 4K 120 because it's automatically slowed down, it's about one to one. So 30 minutes of footage will take you about 30 minutes to transcode with this Mac Pro. This guy right here. This known YouTuber has no idea this camera, the number one feature you do not know about when it comes to the R5, is it shoots proxies internally to the SD card simultaneously while you shoot either 8K or 4K, whatever flavor you like, to the CFast Express card. Game changer that nobody is talking about. You also have the ability to record different types of media to specific cards and record proxies while shooting video. So with that said, welcome to the video. These are the top four things you probably didn't know existed in the EOS R5. I just mentioned one, let's get into number two. All right, coming in at number two is storage actually. Now we all know it takes an SD card and a CF Express card, but what you might not know is you can save quite a bit of money if you shop around. Now we have the obvious SanDisk Extreme 512 gigs for $600. Sounds okay, expensive, but if I'm gonna record 8K raw video, yeah, I might need a couple of those. But we have this wonderful brand, I'm not sponsored by the way, um, I just love their cards, never have any issues with them, and that is Delkin, and they have a two terabyte for a thousand dollars. That means if you was to go with SanDisk, you are paying $1,400 more to get what? A brand that is approved by Canon? Just because Delkin's not on the list doesn't mean they don't work. I'm here to tell you they work beautifully. I've owned a 1DX, uh, a C200, which took CFast cards at the time, and I never had any issues with their cards formatting, copying stuff over, read errors, never got any of that. So I know I'm a nobody, but trust me, these cards are beautiful and two terabytes is more than enough. You're gonna get what? An hour and 40 minutes of 8K raw recording. It's more than enough for a day's shoot. And I think that is such a luxury people are sleeping on. Moving on to number three out of the four things you might not realize about the EOS R5, and that is the overheating debacle. There's so many videos on YouTube, you know, talking about this. But one guy, his name is Brian Chen. He uploaded a video on YouTube. I will link it below and I'll try to show a little small sample here so you can kind of get an idea of what to expect. And he showcases the camera overheating. He time lapses the entire recording and he turns the camera off, turns the camera back on and changes the recording mode from 4K HQ to 4K full frame non-HQ. Why is that important? Because it doesn't overheat. So whether you're recording in 8K RAW, 8K RI, or the 4K HQ modes, once it overheats, turn off the camera, turn it back on, go into settings and change your recording format to 4K non-HQ. Now that he has it set, he's gonna hit record and Notice there was no time limit. There was no like you have two minutes of recording time. No, he's just gonna record and just let it record because the 4K 9HQ doesn't have really any overheating issues. So if you're in a pinch where you feel like you need to get some footage, you're annoyed with the overheating, at least you can still record something. And something is better than nothing. So this is, I think, a very good temp solution to Canon comes out with that rumored R5 mount. I don't know what that's going to be, but that's interesting. Or Tilta, if it isn't just a concept and actually is a reality, we also get a solution as well from a third party. So I think the whole overheating issues is starting to be something, eh, maybe this is not the right camera for a professional environment, but for everyday shooters like myself who run and gun and just record clips here and there, don't really continuously record, I'm not gonna have no issues, and I'm gonna damn right take advantage of that AK RAW. And finally at number four, and that is to take advantage of this camera's whole point of existence. And that is the AK RAW. Just like when the C200 came out, 
they were marketing 4K internal DCI RAW at 60 frames a second. It's shocking to see how many people don't even shoot RAW on the C200. Never to say you have to, but the luxury is there, and especially now that CFASA cards are, are, are very cheap, you can even modify it to take an SSD. I have a video on that on my channel. It's a no-brainer. So when it comes to the R5, now that you know Delkin has some very affordable CF Express cards, why not? Yeah, it's more storage. You get less recording time, but you're still dealing with those overheating issues. If you notice on the sheet, the AK RAW versus the AK Alt-I, it's still the same recording time. So you might as well just shoot the RAW. You're still going to deal with those overheating issues if you record long periods at a time where you're in a very hot environment. So my suggestion is to enjoy that AK RAW, unless you need the higher frame rates above 30p. If you need 60p, 4K 120, then obviously you switch to that 10-bit 422. But also, like I showed in my video yesterday, if you didn't watch it, link in the description, or you can click that annotation. Um, I talked about how to edit that footage comfortably in your editing software. So if you're interested in that, give that a watch because that's gonna make your editing flow a lot easier. And no, I am not taking the proxy route. My goal is to avoid that at all costs, unless you have a very low end machine. Then again, like I mentioned earlier in this video, you can use the proxies it records to the SD card and edit beautifully, no problem. So that's the end of this one. Hope you guys enjoyed, subscribe. I am new here, trying to make this a little better than my previous video. Hope it looks better. Um, and yeah, just trying to give you a different point of view on this thing. All these YouTubers are, are, are taking the same approach, not to knock any hate on them. You know, it's their right, you know, it's their opinion. Um, but I just think the overheating issues really isn't that big of a deal. The editing issues really isn't that big of a deal. People just got to be more realistic. Nobody's going out there and shooting 20 minutes of AK RAW continuously. And if that's your goal, then this is not the camera for you. Um, and when it comes to editing, there's ways around it. There's so many different ways to, to edit these footage, this footage comfortably. And I show you how in that video. Link in the description once again. So, uh... Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button and y'all have a good day.